In this example, we're going to find an area of a region, which we can be reminded of an earlier chapter, but the only difference now is it is a polar curves. So um, what we're gonna be doing here is finding the area of a region inside the polar curve, three cosine theta, and outside the curve, two minus one cosine theta. And then we'll round our answer in the end. So we're going to need a couple of things here. The first thing we need to know is the area, right, of a region bounded by a polar curve. And we'll probably need, um, just like before, some sine and cosine identities, which we'll probably see later on. Okay, so the first thing is to graph them, because I feel like we need to see it. Um, so I went ahead and did that. However, um, feel free to um, go to Desmos, uh, which I can go right here. And notice that this is just a regular grid on Desmos. And my grid over here has the polar coordinates. So in doing that, we can see that um, we want that here. So we can easily go to this wrench in the top right corner and click it. And we see under the word grid, there's two types. Go ahead and click this other circle and you'll get the radians around the polar, uh, the Cartesian coordinate plane and some polar coordinates. So the grid is just that and then that's the polar coordinate, which is nice. Now we can go ahead over here on the right and just enter in our equation. So the first one is that polar curve R, and I just put R equals cosine, I'm sorry, three times cosine theta. And I like to spell out theta and it just went ahead and gave me that circle. And then also it knew it was in polar coordinates when I put the R. So it works out really nicely. The second one, I'm going to go ahead and put R equals um, two minus one times cosine. And yeah, you don't have to put the one, but in case you get a different number, then you know to put the one, uh, that value there. And then you can kind of see now the polar coordinates and I'll zoom in once. So you, now you can see how I got this graph over here. And so I just went ahead and took a little screenshot and put it on my paper. So it's really important if you're using um, any sort of device, you can go ahead and take a screenshot or save. There's a little share graph here and you can export the image, embed, the, embed it or print it, but you should always export it. That way you can either sketch it or you can just write over it like we are. So now that we've sketched it and I put the graph in, now let's go ahead and shade where exactly what region we need to find. Okay, so it says find the region inside the polar curve three cosine theta. So that one was the red one. So I'm gonna just shade the whole region. <laughs> and then we're gonna um, find it inside now, but outside the curve R equal to minus one cosine theta. So outside of this blue curve, outside of it. So it can't be inside. So notice that it's gonna be this little area here. So then I'm gonna shade that in a little bit of a deeper color and I'll put that in red. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we can see that it's symmetric about the X axis. So essentially what we can do is just take find this quarter, um, or part and then double it, right? Like we can use that doubling um, integral um, property. So then if we go ahead and mark the intersection points, which is here and here, that means we would have to go ahead and find theta and beta where theta and beta are between zero and two pi. So they should be in polar coordinates. So in doing that, we can easily see that these coordinates are pi over three and five pi over three, or essentially pi over three and negative pi over three. But since we're going to use the fact that it's symmetric about this X, I'm just gonna put from zero 
to pi over 3, let me go ahead and do it in pink, from 0 to pi over 3 and then double it, just using the integration properties. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and get started and set this up. Now we do know that because we're not taking the entire area of the circle, we are leaving out this other piece from the other um, polar function that we have to um, honor that property of area between two regions, right? In this case, we're gonna have area, um, well, it's usually top minus bottom, or right minus left, and we're gonna use the right minus left. So this one, we're gonna have this curve minus this curve. So here, let's set it up. We get area is equal to one half integral from that zero to pi over three, but we have to double it because we have two pieces of the red right, of right minus left. So our right is going to be three cosine theta squared minus the, the left, which is two minus cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, so now we have to go ahead and um, simplify and then maybe we have to use some cosine tricks from our previous chapter. So um, we're going to go ahead and reduce out that 2 and 1 half and have the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 9 cosine squared theta minus, and this is just a perfect squared trinomial, so we're going to have 2 squared is 4, so minus 4 and then here we're going to have 2 times cosine times 2, so um, minus 4 cosine, right? And then minus, which gives it a plus, 4 cosine theta. And then a minus cosine squared, so that's just positive cosine squared times the minus, so minus cosine squared theta. And this is all d theta. So now it just becomes a very, um, just kind of a simple trigonometric integral. So now at this point, we can go ahead and combine like terms and see what we can do. So right away, I see 9 cosine squared minus a cosine squared gives us that 8 cosine squared um, plus the 4 cosine and then the minus 4 in the back, d theta, and then the definite integral from 0 to pi over 3. So I do see that these are pretty going to be pretty um, straightforward in integrating, right? Because we do know that if I put over here the integral of cosine theta, d theta, is just a positive sine theta plus c if it's indefinite, right? And then we do know that the integral of a constant k d theta is just linear, right? So it's just going to be k theta plus c. So we have these two down. But this one, we're going to have to use what the tricks that we used way back in a previous section and say, okay, well, the definite, um, we have to rewrite this as from cosine squared theta and use our trigonometric identity of one half, one plus cosine 2 theta. So we'll have to be using, um, let me go ahead and highlight. I'm going to have to replace cosine squared with 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And then, then we can go ahead and just use these other ones here. So again, you always have to have, I always call it the bag of tricks um, because you do always have to have the bag of tricks to grab things and recall them quickly 
to be able to finish this problem. Notice like we had a side margin appendix area of information and just to actually continue our problem over here on the left. So now let's go ahead and do that. So the area is going to be the definite integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 8 times 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta plus 4 cosine theta minus 4 d theta. All right, and so now we can go ahead and simplify. We see 8 times one half is four and we'll go ahead and take that four and distribute and so we can go ahead and get now the definite integral uh, from pi zero to pi to th over three plus um, or time of four times one four plus four cosine two theta and then plus copy and paste four cosine theta minus four d theta and what's nice about do, writing this step out is, is this part here where 4 minus 4 is 0 and they cancel. So now all we're left with is the area that's equal to um, definite integral 0 to pi over 3 of cosine 4 cosine 2 theta plus 4 cosine theta d theta and now we can go ahead and use our properties here so now I'm going to have um, 4 times and the definite integral of cosine 2 theta we've done so many times just 1 half sine 2 theta right, plus um, 4 and then sine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. So here we're going to go ahead and reduce the 4 and the half to be 2 and then we get this equal to 2 sine 2 times pi over 3 plus 4 times sine of pi over 3 Okay. That's the first part, minus, and then plug and chug the other. But we know from experience that what this is going to be, it's going to be, we're going to slash it, annihilate it to zero. We already see it here. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and slash, slash, so we don't have to worry about that back part. And now we can just worry about this front part. So we get two times, and then here we can see that sine of 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3, we can just go ahead and use the unit circle. I assume that you will too, and we know that to be um, uh, pi square root of 3 over 2. And you can draw those triangles if you need to. Plus 4 times sine of pi over 3, which is the same as square root of 3 over 2. Because there, um, 1 is quadrant 1, 1 is quadrant 2. Okay, so um, we're pretty much uh, almost done here with the twos reduce out. We get four and two, they reduce to three. So then we get, um, I'm sorry, two. And then we get square root of three plus two square roots of three, which is gonna be three square roots of three. And if I went ahead and back to Desmos and just put this in the calculator, 3 times, and then the square root of 3, if you go ahead and show this keypad, you'll see a little radical symbol on that bottom, and put in a 3, and sure enough, it gives you 5, and I have to round to 4 decimal places, so 5.1962. So all we need to remember is to graph the curves, determine the area, and then notice symmetry when possible. Most likely you always will have it. And then you grab some tricks from your bag to just have a nice clean integration process on one side and then maybe all your other notes on the other.